My name is Stanislaw Robert Liberta, Adobe instructor, and today we're going to be talking about creating 3D text in Element 3D. So you can see it's just like that opening title I just had there, and I'm just playing it back and forth. And we've got some pretty cool things going on here. I've got some reflections going on here. I've got some lighting changes kind of happening there, and this whole thing is moving in 3D space. So let's go ahead and get started with that. I'm just going to start with making a new composition. Uh, this is just going to be a 1080p composition, so 1920 by 1080. And I'm going to go ahead and make this five seconds long. And right now, we don't have anything in our scene. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to start with my text tool here. So I just Command T to pull up my text tool. And I'm going to go ahead and lay that out. And I'm going to go ahead and write out my text here. And the reason why we're going ahead and actually making out this text is we need Element to have some sort of information to create 3D text. So I can't just throw an element and say, hey, let's make some 3D text. Uh, while I could do that in M object with Apple Motion, I don't have that option here in Element. Whether or not that may change in a future version, I don't know, but this works out great for us. And I'm just going to go ahead and change my font here. So let's go ahead and change it to that same font. I'm using Bebas New. And I have my one text layer here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a second text layer right away. So, uh, you know, we had our AV Ultra and then I had my Element 3D tutorials. So let's actually make this a little bit bigger there. And I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate this layer. And the reason why I'm duplicating is just so that way I can go ahead and pull this down. And it's roughly in the same spot left to right as it was there. So. All right, we're going to go ahead and select all, and I'll just make that quite a bit smaller there. Okay, so now we have our text set up and ready to go. So the next thing that we want to do is we actually want to create a element layer. So with element, we always have to put in a solid to put the effect on here. So I'm just going to go ahead and name it element. If you've never used Element 3D before, I do recommend checking out my other tutorials I have about getting started with Element before you jump into this one. The other ones might give you a better idea of the workflow of Element and then being able to use that information, coming back to this one and making out some text. So I've got my element layer, and right now I don't see anything because my text layer is underneath it. So I'm just going to rearrange my layers here. So there's my AV Ultra, my Element 3D Tutorials, and my Element Layer. So we'll go ahead and put our Element effect on there. And I'll drop that right on there. And the most important thing that you want to do at this point is go into our custom layers. If you click on your custom layers tab here, underneath you'll have custom text and masks. So I'm going to go ahead and twirl that down and here I can choose my different paths to use for the element text tool. So I'm going to go ahead and pick my AV Ultra and my Element 3D Tutorials. We can also use this to actually extrude out mask shapes. I have another tutorial all about that, talking about taking a 2D logo and turning it into a 3D logo. So be sure to go ahead and check that one out. But for our purposes, we're just working with text. So I'm going to go ahead and collapse that and I'll zoom back out here. Now that we have our text set up, I'm going to just turn them off. We don't need to have those on right now. And I'm going to go ahead and jump into my scene setup. And this is what you see when we're in Element, just like every other time. One. And what I'm going to do right now is click on Extrude. And when I click on Extrude, well, that's pulled out my text. What exactly is happening when I'm clicking on my Extrude? Well, Extrude is looking at my custom paths that I had set up and pulled it into 3D space. So it basically made it into geometry. It's very similar to when you have uh, text elements and try to use the ray tracer in After Effects, but the ray tracer is pretty useless. So notice how fast this is. It's great. 
And I can see that I'm in my custom path right down here. So under my custom path, that's the layer it's using. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom that back out. And now let's start putting materials onto our text here. So what do I mean by my materials? Well, by default, you can see my C material. Right now it says bevel one. And in my group folder, I have something that says extrusion model. I'm just gonna rename that by double clicking it here and just write title. And the one underneath is gonna end up being a subtitle, but let's twirl this down. And underneath, you can see that it has a bevel one. Well, right now that's just telling me this is the material that's on here. If I wanna change this, I can click on my basic settings here and I can just get in here and start changing the color. So we can go ahead and pick our color right here under our basic settings. We have some other settings here too, like our bevel, which will actually make this a bit thicker. Our expand edges. For our purposes, we're just going to go ahead and jump into some presets here. When you picked up your copy of Element 3D, it should come with a bunch of bevel presets. I'm using Element version two. Uh, it's great. I, if you have uh, version one, I do recommend going ahead, going ahead and springing for version two. It is a world of difference in the way it works. And everything I'm gonna be using today is going to be in version two. We're in our physical settings here for our physical bevels. And I can click on any one of these and drop it onto my text. And you can see what it's doing here. So right here, if you look at my blue, I've got like three, two or three layers here. If I click and I drag that on here, we can see what's going on here. I actually have three different layers. I have one, two, and three, and those are actually three different bevels. So these are kind of presets that affect our title in here. And notice I've actually got four of them. So if under my title, if I click on this, I can see my bevel copies four. If I change this to one, it's gotten rid of those other ones. And if I change this back to, let's say four, well now I've got them back there again. Now I don't need that many in here. I'm just gonna change this to, let's say two. And I'm actually gonna change this bevel maybe to something like this. And you can see we've got some reflection on this particular bevel. And if I drill down into these, I can actually see what it's made out of. Now this brings up an interesting point on what exactly is being reflected here. Because as far as I'm concerned, I'm in a big empty room. So what am I reflecting here? Well, I'm reflecting my environment. And if I click on environment, you can see it's this room that my 3D text is in. So right against there is a white wall. And if I flip around here, you can see that's the reflection of that white wall. Well, again, when I picked up my element, I picked up a bunch of different environments. So you have some environments that are included uh, that are the basic ones. If I click, double click on any one of these different environments, you can see that it's changing there. And I'm gonna be using the basic 2K03. And right now it looks kind of crappy. And that's because I have my draft textures turned on. What that is, it's kind of like a low res version. And if I turn that off, you can see now that my different backgrounds are really nice and really clean in through there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pick this 2K03. And I'm also gonna change my title to just having this one bevel. I just want it to be kind of shiny in through there. And what I can do now is I can just hit OK. And there's my text. Uh, how do I know that's in 3D though? Well, I really don't know unless I go ahead and I put in a camera. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put in a camera here really quick. And now that I have my camera in here, I can actually move around in my 3D space and I can see that it is still in 3D even though it is not a 3D layer. It creates its own 3D layer space. But now what about that background I had in my original title and my secondary text layer. Well, if I want my secondary text layer in there, what I'm gonna to need to do is go back into my scene setup and extrude again. And as soon as I hit extrude again, well, it looks like it didn't do anything, but what happened was it actually made a copy of that first extrusion model. 
And so it's still looking in custom path one, and I need to change this to custom path two. And now I can see that I've got both of them here. And I can just zoom that out. And what I can do is just drag this down here. And we're gonna go ahead and put another bevel on this one here. Maybe this one will stand out a little bit more. Something like that. And I like the way that's looking here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK. Now, we've got our text in here and we have our camera in here so I can move around. But what about that background? Well, if I come under my render settings in Element here, we have our physical environment. And there's going to be a couple things that we want to do to kind of sweeten this up here. We have our show in background. And what this will do is it'll turn on that background that we had there. And I can also rotate this environment as well. So what this means is it'll physically turn that environment and spin it around. And I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna turn this on its angle here and I'm just rotating it around there just so I get some nice kinds of reflections. So really I'm just kind of monkeying around with these settings here so I get it at a bit of a corner. All right, something like that. It's not gonna be identical but I'm pretty happy with the way that's starting to look. Additionally, I can change the exposure and how bright my background is. I want a fairly bright background here with a lot of contrast. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And another thing that I want to do is add some ambient occlusion. So what ambient occlusion is going to do is give us a little bit of soft shadowing in between our letters. So for example, if I go ahead and I take my camera in here, and I'm gonna zoom in really far here. Notice in this A and this V, and in between the different letters, there should be some shadowing from how they're intersecting each other. Well, by default, that's turned off. And if I go ahead and I turn that on, we can start cranking up the intensity here. And that's gonna start adding a little bit of shadow. It's a, it's a little subtle, but it's a, a big enough change that I almost always turn that on. And if possible, we want to make sure that this is, you know, at least in our 16, 18 range. And that's going to add that, that nice little tint to it. And you can see what it's doing here on the side. As I turned it to the side, if I turn that off, everything is very, very flat. And if I turn that on, now we can see that. So maybe we can dial that back just a little bit. All right, that's looking pretty good. I'm just gonna take my camera back, reset that here. So what I wanna do now is I just wanna add a little bit of camera movement here. So something just like that, where you know maybe it's gonna start off to the side and then end up back straight like that. And what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that my text is set up the way I want. So I want it to be scaled, I want it to be um, positioned correctly. So I'm gonna go back into my group one. And if I remember from my scene setup that all my text is in group one here. So I can go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to go into the particle look. And in my particle look, I can go ahead and scale that up. And in my particle replicator, this is where I can move it in its X and Y axis. So I like the way that that is laid out on my screen right here. So I'm just going to go to my four second mark, maybe my three second mark here. And I'm going to go ahead and create some keyframes for my camera. And the reason why I'm putting it here at about three seconds is because this is where I want it to end up. And so if I put a keyframe at the beginning here and then start moving things around, I can get lost with the way my actual camera movement works. But by putting a keyframe at three seconds, now I can freely position this and I know it's going to end up in the right place. So maybe I'll have this zoomed in this time, just coming from the side here. And now when I go ahead and play that back, you can see that it's animating. 
We got that nice reflection. And it comes to a nice stop. I want that stop to be a little bit more subtle, so I'm going to go ahead and easy ease that stop just so the animation of that camera moving slows down to a nice stop. And one last thing I'm going to do to tweak this here is I'm actually going to add a null object in here. And the reason why I'm going to add a null object is I want my camera to be continually pulling back the whole time. But I can't really do that in that camera controller because that camera controller has its own things going on. It's already got its animation for its X and Y and a little bit of a Z. So I want this to just be constantly steady pulling back. So I'm going to turn this into a 3D layer. So now I've got my null object and what I want to do is I just want to parent my camera to this null object. And now that I have that parented, I can kind of continually be pulling this back. And in space here, we can just have that pulled forward. So now we're going to get this continual movement, even though the camera is done animating, the null object is going to be pushing that camera back. So it's going to hit this three second mark here, and it's going to continually just slowly be pulling back in space there. Give that a little bit more. And I'm going to just change this to quarter resolution so we can see that a little bit quicker there. All right, so there it stops, and now it continually moves back. So that is the basics of text extrusion in Element 3D. There's a lot more things that we can do with this. We can add lighting to this. We can add uh, lens flares to this and some other color. Uh, on top of this and even animate these letters to come in independently and build in but all that's going to be in a separate tutorial if you like this tutorial feel free to subscribe to AV Ultra if you're looking for formal training in Element 3D Premiere Pro uh, Apple Motion Final Cut or other video production programs or techniques please visit my website at stanislawrobertlaberta.com and there you can have more information as well as more tutorials on these different programs. Again, my name is Stanislaw Robert Labrera. Hopefully you found this useful.